my book there's only one thing more addictive than sock knitting and that's spinning the yarn to make the socks. In this video I'm going to talk to you about what makes a really good sock yarn and how we can spin it. My name's Becca, I'm a hand spinner, knitter and newbie weaver and you're very welcome to my humble home in West Wales. As hand spinners we've got a multitude of fibres that we can use but really for socks we want something that's going to be quite springy and hard wearing and I think you really can't go far wrong with wool. In fact when I very first started knitting socks and this was actually a commercial yarn not something I'd spun I fell in love with this bamboo and I loved the colours and just thought oh they'll make fantastic socks and knitted them up not realising of course that there was no stretch in it so I couldn't actually pull them over my feet. Luckily I only made one but you know it was a bit annoying and I just hadn't really thought about the quality of the fibres that I needed. So fast forward 20 years and maybe I've learnt a little bit more about knitting socks and certainly I've learnt a lot more about spinning. We've got lots of breeds that we could choose out of all the sheep in the world but ideally for socks we're looking for something that's got a bit of crimp to it so it's going to spring back into place it doesn't felt that easily and it's on the fine to medium size traditionally socks were made from downland breeds and when i say downland breed i mean something like a south down or a dorset something in that area and quite often what was also used was shetland and that's actually what i'm going to demonstrate today and that is a Shetland with 20% nylon, which I have bought as a commercial blended roving. And that comes from World of Wool, which I will link in the description below. Now, when we spin it, we're gonna spin it in a, with a short four draw, so that is a Worcester style. And that's about as technical as I get with spinning, to be honest, um, I'm not an uber technical spinner. You want to aim for something fairly consistent. Um, if you are not particularly good at spinning a consistent yarn, I really wouldn't let that put you off. I think that just comes with practice and you know, just go for it because you will never learn unless you actually do, you know, kind of make a few mistakes and go for it. So we're also looking for something fairly fine. So um, I like a traditional sock yarn sort of weight which is about four ply I suppose but you can easily knit up to a double knitting which is what's that about 12 wraps per inch so I'm going for something that's going to be above about 16 wraps per inch so it's quite fine and I will be doing a short forward draw or my version of a short forward draw. When I started down this little rabbit hole of sock knitting and this all basically started in my last video because I was assessing some hand spun and I decided I wanted to make some socks, which is something I hadn't done for ages. And I'm really enjoying knitting them. And I sort of thought, well, you know what? I should really spin something that's actually spun four socks because I just spun this. It wasn't spun four socks, but actually the way I'd spun it and the material means that actually it's gonna make pretty good socks. So I started researching as you do and came across this the Twisted Sister Sock Workbook. And it's by Ling Bogle and it was an absolute classic. When I learned to spin, that's what everybody was kind of raving about. And you can still get it online. Uh, it, I think it is now out of print, but you can certainly get a secondhand copy. And it will go through how to actually write your own sock pattern using your own hand spun yarn. This copy, I think was about eight pounds about ten dollars I think and um, it's certainly not hard to get uh, published by Interweave as so many of these fabulous books are um, oh dear so sad to lose Interweave anyway I, I digress so if you're looking for a sock pattern to use for your hand spun then I would really recommend this book now I'm gonna have a little look at what I bought and see how it spins up we're going to have a look at this blend in a little bit more detail. This is Shetland with nylon and it's called Fountain Blue from World of Wool. And you can see it's sort of teals and turquoises and blues. And then I also ordered one of these little things, 
tub of joy. You never quite know what you're going to get. I think they're really good fun. 50 grams. And as you can see, I think they're going to work quite well. And I'm just contemplating how I'm going to spin these. Because I want to do a worsted style spin, which means a short forward draw, then I probably am going to split these down into pencil rovings and somehow I'm going to incorporate this in that. But uh, when I've decided what I'm going to do, I'll show you. So the first thing I've done is I've split these in half and now, and that was width ways by pulling the staples apart. And now I'm going to split them lengthways into pencil rovings and I'm going to try and separate the colours as much as I can. So because we're doing socks they're going to be quite thin spin in the end. So I'm just going to keep pulling off pencil rovings and probably what I will do is I'll try and spin in order and actually write it down so I spin both plies in the same order. So let's uh, pull off one there. So we've got these nice neat little piles of pencil rovings. And I'll, because there's twice as much of the blue as there is of the predominantly white, then I will do two to one ratio. And I'm going to carry on doing this and uh, again give you uh, a little look when I've finished. So I've split them down into the rovings. I could of course have weighed these and been really, really precise about it, but I am not a really, really precise person. So it's going to be roughly right, and roughly right is fine for me. Obviously, you know, each person has a different way of doing things. So I'm going to start with the blue, and then we're going to have the, the whiter one, two blues and a white, and I'm just going to work my way up and down. And I've taken a photograph of this, so I know exactly how I'm going to do the next ply so that it matches. And in theory, we've sort of got a self-striping sock yarn. Well, that's the theory. I guess as the video progresses, we'll know whether it's worked. I always knew when I started making these videos that the thing I was going to find really difficult was actually describing what I do because so much of it is by feel. And I've just been getting the tension right and I've tried to record my process and the process is just sort of feedback through my hands so I think um, I think the only thing I can say is you've just got to practice and practice and practice and when you've been spinning for 20 years you know and you can tell me if my spinning is any good I don't know I mean it's good enough for me whether it's good enough for anybody else I don't really care but anyway um, I know what I want and so I sort of spin and sort of alter the tension and just really do a ply back test and in theory that is going to be about what I want. I am going to link a video below when someone is demonstrating how to do a worsted yarn and a nice thin yarn because I just don't think me kind of going, oh, well, you know, I twist my tension knob and have a go and twist my tension knob back again if it's not quite right. That's just not that helpful. So um, I definitely am going to link some videos which give you much more structured teaching. But I've kind of, you know, I think I've probably said before, the thing I geek out about is the colours and using the different fibres 
I don't really geek out about technique. Um, I think I just that's a very personal thing. I spin what I want to spin, and like I said, I don't really care what anybody else thinks about it. But suddenly, when you are in front of other spinners, maybe you do care about your technique a little bit more. Hmm. Possibly a subject for another video. So here is the finished plied bobbin. And this looks uber, uber thin. But what is going to happen is that when I give this a wash, it's actually going to bounce up a little bit. So it's going to end up quite a bit fluffier than this. But I'm pleased with the consistency. It's spun up really nicely. And we've sort of got a wash of colour. Um, I did sort of say I was going for a, a sort of self-striping. Um, and I think once I've actually knitted this up, you're going to be able to see that much more. Uh, but I will make another video on what it looks like knitted up. So there you go. That is the first skein completed.